Well, I have been speaking Chinese, so to go back and speak English, so I, I will have some problems. So I'll try to be forgiving, because we talk about forgiving. So uh, I told the Chinese, uh, please forgiving me, because uh, sometimes I don't have a very good pronunciation. You know, in Chinese, it's very difficult language, as, as difficult, but more difficult than English. So you can easily mispronounce the word, and it give a different meaning. So. Uh, uh, here we are practicing forgiving, uh, <laughs> forgiveness, and and so uh, I think the subject of my talk today is uh, atonement and atonement. Uh, how do we move from atonement to atonement? And the central uh, idea of my talk is the fact that Jesus is both the atonement and also is the means whereby we can become at one man with God, with ourselves, and with others. Because of Christ's love, just like Father Neste is talking about how Christ is the fullness of God's revelation. The divine love concretized in time and in space. We become able to, to know God, to be a, a Acquainted with God because of Christ. So Christ is in St. John Gospel like the verb love huh? in a very concrete way, expressing the Father love. And His love, God's love, is, is really embodies in the whole concept of, of mercy. And that mercy is really revealed in Him too, the act of atonement and also in the love that Jesus um, used to express how the Father wants us all to become united in Him and with God the Father. He wants us all become one with Him. So I just want to begin because I, I did some uh, when uh, Father Nesty, uh, Maureen, and Jane, and Cynthia asking me to do some kind of designing for the environment. We know how important it is the environment. So I was struggling how to capture the whole concept of God's mercy. Uh, before I get into the, the, the design today, because it's all leading into what I'm talking. Uh, I, there was a story that touched me very much. It's uh, a story about a piece of silk fabric, very precious. Uh, a lady has that. And one day she was using needle and somehow was the, the blood stain, the raw blood just fell onto that piece of silk fabric. Huh? So she, she felt so bad because that was so valuable to her and she felt like it's now it's just a, a piece of junk, it's useless, it's, it's just dirty, it's stained. So one of her, uh, her very close friend who is an artist came by to see her and, and then saw her, her, her distraught, you know, feeling very depressed about the fact that she lost this uh, mem memorable and valuable piece of silk fabric. So he said, give it to me. And he said, what are you, she asking him, what are you going to do? Let me try to do something. So he went home and began to use his uh, brush and then different color and he painted a beautiful uh, piece of painting from that one stained silk fabric. And when, uh, after one week, he brought it back and gave it to her, and the woman was completely amazed by that masterpiece, a work of art. <coughs> and I think, in, in a way, our life is li like that. Huh? Most of us are a very, yes, but I don't know what was talking about. We are created in God's image. We have that human dignity. We are created, and we are loved by God. We are precious. But sometimes in our life, we spill our own blood, or some, sometimes people just do the blood shedding onto us and make our own heart and soul and body become stained. And we don't know what to do with it. We feel so sorry, and we try to figure out how to use the best we know how to about, our, uh, uh, about ourselves. 
but we don't know how to enter Holy Spirit and Christ and God coming into our life. And, and through the hands of many artists, all of the people that we met in our life, they love us into life. And they try to put here and there a stroke of painting as another color so that they can help us to recreate us and make us into masterpieces of God arts. And you know, I was taking a walk and I was thinking, you know, you talk about the wood of the cross, and I was walking on, uh, let's see, what, what, uh, Sunday morning. I was walking and I said, I want to put the cross on something which is meaningful. And I was walking by and I see this rotten piece of wood. But I was attracted by its beauty. It has time, it has all of the illustrations of our own life, our human life. You know, sometimes we are being eaten up by many termites, many moths, uh, they are parasites, they cling on to us in different codependent relationships, different addictions, different kind of uh, problems that just dump on us because our, or our, our family of origins, because of our, our, our wrong use of our, our freedom, our choices. So sometimes all these termites and these mosses are really eating up into the wood of our own being. And you know what? But it has beauty. And, and I think Christ is willing to lean on it and sometimes to grow out of it it's because it's become a work of art. It becomes realistic. Unless we learn to forgive and to integrate everything that we have in our life, unless we learn to see God's face in our own rottenness, in our own brokenness, in our own blood stain in all of the, the wrongdoings, the mistakes that we make in our life, we can never become a masterpiece of God's face to others. So that's why I chose this, work, this piece of wood here, also from the trunk in China. It's many years and they put together. And, and then I put this rotten piece of wood with all the termites are still in it, you know? <laughs> To, to bring about the realism of life. Huh? And so we, we can never get rid of all our problems. But sometimes, you know, just like St. Paul, God, you know, he wants God to get rid of this throne on my side. I don't want that termite inside me. But God say, my grace is not for you. It is when you are powerless, my power shining through. The power of mercy, of forgiveness, of reconciliation. So Christ is leaning on us. And because of that, St. Paul said, Nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. You know? Nakedness, power, or principalities, all of my sins. It is in and through the rottenness of our own mistakes, our own sins, our own hurt and our pains. Christ manifests His divine mercy. And He becomes the seat of mercy for us. And that is the word from Enrique mean justifica justification or reconciliation. Jesus becomes the seat of God's mercy, where we can sit in Him, with Him, where we can become also the seat of mercy for others. So this is the tree in Ali Shan. It's one of the highest mountains in Taiwan. I went up there, I don't know how many meters, maybe 6,000 meters ahead, above the sea level. This tree is the oldest tree there, 2,500 years. Mind you, before Christ was born, it was there. It's standing so many thunderstorms, tornadoes, and all kind of harsh weathers. And it's, it's a three-generation tree. Uh, you know, it's not simply one generation. It's grow on top of another tree, another tree. Three-generation trees. Uh. It's built on other culture, uh, other culture, other generations, and they struggle through all of the arts and still standing as being the symbol and the sign of the curse. Why? Because perhaps it's learn, learn to be flexible, learn to, learn to bend, to curve, and learn to adjust to all of the situation in life. And because the root is so deep, so deep into the the rock of the mountains into the soil of the earth, into all kind of cracks on the mountains there. So sometimes I think just like Father Nesty this morning was taking us into all the cracks of our culture, 
yeah? but also into the beauty of our culture. You know, I have to tell you how I come to appreciate American culture so much since I left America for three years. You know, at least we have this kind of forum with this God, we struggle, we talk about God. And at least we're willing to have a, an open discourse to discuss about our problems, our conflicts, whether we are managing our conflicts, whether we are resolve our conflict, we all are looking at our problem. We are able to do that. You know, other countries, we don't have that freedom because of the culture is so insensitive to personal feelings. It's all about the community, but yes, they never take care of the individual need. You know, I went to China, I went to Vietnam. Communism is just one of the, the ideology which really rub human beings from having that sense of dignity, have a voice for itself, for himself, for herself. You know, and we cannot even say what we need to say. And a lot of issues that happens within the family in, Chi in Taiwan, for instance, because Family pride, so you should not bring it up. Just cover it up. Cover the termites. Huh? Cover all the rotten things inside the trunk of the family, in, inside your own heart and your own soul. And because of that, there's so many ways, what's called passive aggressive way of expressing violence and anger. And a lot, you know, Taiwan is one of the second, uh, uh, have the second highest grades of suicide. Yeah? Uh, in, in, in Asia, besides Japan. Huh? All about success, success. Uh, you get success in this and that. And they are working so hard to become very successful uh, techn in te technology, in material life, and everything. But sometimes the, the spiritual dimension, psychological dimension, the personal relationship is really lacking. So I just want to share with you, to, exp to, to, to share with you how important it is. Reconciliation. You know, I, I, the last three years was really a, a journey of reconciliation for me. You know, all of us have our own problems, our own termites, our own problems. Uh, by learning Chinese, I learned to become an, uh, an ambassador of reconciliation to myself. Huh? <laughs> Chinese was so difficult. God, the, the language is driving me nuts. I, I, I was so proud of myself being intelligent. I can learn a language very fast. Huh? I studied almost like seven languages, but Chinese was impossible. The written words like, you know, like the, the language of the devil, you know, you don't know what. <laughs> after the 500, after the 500 characters, you just, you just, you don't know what they are anymore. They get confused. And, and the spoken language is difficult, four tones, and it's just hard. And for me, Asian, just imagine for other Europeans or Americans. But, you know, it's just a learning experience because I learned to admit that I don't know anything. And I learned to be told that all your pronunciation is incorrect. You have to relearn everything after two years working so hard. And I had a teacher who challenged uh, the hell out of me, <laughs> <laughs> telling me that, you know, you, the problem with you, your ears are not open. You think that you hear, but you didn't hear. And your heart's not open. So if you say that you're intelligent, he said in Chinese, intelligent means your eyes have to be open, your ears have to be open, your heart must be open so that you can integrate the inside and apply. And so there's a natural flow from what you know up here into what you know in here, and then from here, you flow out in your action and your behavior. And that's what St. Paul was trying to talk to of the early church community. They all know about Christ. They met Christ, they experienced Christ, but you know what? They only do that intellectually. They don't morally embody the teaching of Christ in their own family, in their own community life. When they sit together in the fellow, fellowship meal, you like Father Nessie talk about the Eucharist on Sunday, they, they all together, the, 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 the slave master, the slaves, the rich and the poor, women and men, they all mingle together, equally sharing the body of Christ. But when they go home, I'm your master. You are my slaves. You are the woman. You are the man. And then they all go back to the formal way of life, their own culture. They never bring Christ to their cultures. And that's the problem. That's why Paul talked about the need of reconciliation. I have enough for introduction. <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> So here, I just want to, 
identify how God in His providence had because God loved us so much. Sometimes I just I'm overwhelmed with the love of God. You know, who am I? You know, a small guy who was born in 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 a small country in the East, yeah, in Asia. You know, I had all kind of problems, but he loved me so much that he make everything work for my good. And sometimes I just don't want to follow his idea, but he still keep pursuing me, using so many stories, so many events, just to knock me down, like knock and board off his horse and say, wake up, son, I love you. The only one who loved you is me, being reconciled to me. Be reconciled to yourself. Learn to love yourself. Learn to see you as the image of God. You know what? And look at now. The story, I just want to illustrate a few stories to see how God had journeyed with humanity. Yeah? To, to tell us He loved us. Like Father Nestle saying, He loved us so much He wants to be merciful. In spite of the fact that we are worthy of His love or not, He's still insisting of giving us. Sometimes we just don't want to receive it. Okay, Adam and Eve, you know, after creating them so beautifully and everything in the image of God, they just want to be better than God. And they commit a, an, an act of disobedience to God and, and, you know, and they feel themselves naked. Huh? And sometimes that's what happens to us. We choose to be ourselves. I got to be me. I don't need anyone else. And so they recognize their, their nakedness, they cover themselves, but the feet of leaves does not cover their, their feel of shame, their, their sense of guilt. So God, what did he do? After he really g give uh, it out, express all of his wrath and anger, but then what did he do? He killed animals and make the leather skins to cover themselves. Did you know that? That's the beginning of how God have been trying to do his best to help us to be flexible, to adjust to our own misbehavior. Okay, I want to read that quotation from the Bible here. I type it out because I know I don't have time. Uh, For the man and his wife, the Lord made leather garments. There is a shedding of blood here, huh? It's vicarious because he killed animals to cover up and to remove the stain, the, the, scent, the, the, the scent of shame from Adam and Eve, okay? Uh, with which he clothed them, okay? The problem is still there, but he just covered it up for the time, waiting for something more perfect to, to remove the blood stain, okay? And then we have the story of, uh, of Cain and Abel, jealousy, huh? Uh, they just one, uh, you know, this story, if you look in, if you study the Bible, uh, uh, animal sacrifice is what's really uh, what God wants. Why? Because in offering animal with blood in it, we illustrate ourselves that we give the best, we give life back to God. So uh, when Cain gave fruits of the trees, he's not willing to give his life. He does not give the best of himself. So that's why in the Jewish tradition, the first son is be belongs to God. So instead of you know, offer himself, <laughs> Abel had to kill an animal to be on his behalf, to be vicarious, to stand on his behalf as a gift from God to illustrate that he give life back to God because he know life comes from God. And so when Cain refused to give life back to God, Cain failed to perform an act of worship. Failed to choose God to be the only one, the most important, the top priority in his life. And that creates chaos. Murder, the setting plus against life rather than for life. Okay, and we have the story of Abraham's sacrifice. On the, on the other hand, Abraham is willing to sacrifice his first son. Illustration of an act of worship, of total, an act of faith. Submit himself totally, Lord, give back to God everything, even though the demand of God may be just unfair. So, so then you see that in in that uh, in that passage. Uh, uh, Isaac uh, was walking with uh, Abraham, and Isaac was asking uh, Abraham, 
Father, he said. Uh, yes, son, he replied. I said, continue. Here are the fire, the wood, but where is the ship for Holocaust? Son Abraham answered, God himself will provide the ship for Holocaust. Uh, the, Father Nesty pointed out to us that uh, uh, to provide, pro, providere in, 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 in Latin means to foresee. So this is really f in anticipating the offering of Jesus, the Son of God, and the first fruit of humanity was really given from all the stain of blood as a sacrifice to reconcile humanity with God. So Jesus is the one who do the perfect act of worship. Put God as the top priority. He give back to God his life. And that's why God give back to him the abundance of life. And he become the source of all life. And become the ambassador of rec reconciliation and the new life in the spirit. What's Father talking about today? About the new life in the spirit that St. Paul was inviting all of the Christians to embrace. Okay, and then we have the story of Moses, and this story I think is, is powerful because Moses uh, recognized something was wrong uh, done to his own Jewish confrere, so he using force and power to kill some of the Egyptians, uh, the, the Egyptians, so his hands was really blood stained. Huh? Uh, he used man's way, huh? violence to to rectify the, uh, the, the unjust situation. Uh, and so the stain of blood was on, on his hands. But then later on, God calling him to uh, become the prophets who led the, who, who led the people out of Egypt. And so instead of you killing, uh, they, they, this still have a problem here. So they kill the, the, the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and put on the, uh, the doorpost and the lintel. And that night also, the angel of God killing all of the firstborn of the Egyptians. So the concept of salvation is still very much limited within the Jewish context. Huh? It's not expanded. It's not universal yet. But there you see still there is a, 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 a substitute. Uh, and that substitute was used as a vic uh, vicariously uh, to, uh, to redeem and to reconcile, to, to, leave, to leave people out of slavery. Uh, and then we have the, uh, how from that tradition on, uh, every time the community uh, commits the sins, they have uh, the, the ritual called scapegoating uh, on the Day of Atonement. Huh? Uh, they, they, they bring out the two lambs. And so uh, one, one lamb for God, one of the lamb is for uh, Satan, for, for, uh, for other cell. Huh? That is Satan. So uh, the one who is selected for God uh, will, be, uh, will be offered to God. But the one, uh, will, be set, will, be set, will be killed. The blood will be taken from that lamb and sprinkled on the, the, the lamb that was offered as a, uh, as a scapegoat. Huh? And, that's that, and after that, the priest will put his hands on that lamb, and that lamb will be sent into the wilderness and let it die in the wilderness. So uh, the scapegoat becomes the sin carrier. Okay? So the blood of the innocent lamb will be uh, sprinkled onto that sin carrier. And that's way they can uh, reconcile temporarily with God uh, and give good one another. Okay? And so we have John the Baptist. There is an indication of Jesus becomes the lamb, the one who victoriously overcame sin from the book of Revelation, and also the one who uh, was on our behalf to reconcile us with God. And so Jesus' sacrifice and Passover become the central uh, focus of the New Testament. And let's just move on. So, uh, the, so we see that blood has uh, two symbolic meanings. Uh, the first one, in the blood there is poison, disease, and addictions. When a person is not worshiping God, is not submitting himself to God, is not giving everything back to God, taking it for himself, whether it's for himself or just uh, 
that person is not is going to make the blood become impure. Okay, worship total submission to God is that which make the blood become pure and precious. Okay, so when we become self-centered, egoistic, then we ro- we actually remove ourselves from God disrupt our relationship with God. When we are not in connection with God, in relationship with God, we begin to become blinded. We begin to uh, see other as a means whereby I can use to satisfy myself. You see that's happened a lot. So, so they, when, when the person becomes self-centered, you know, like I said in the past, ego, uh, uh, one of my students was writing a, news, uh, a paper uh, in the class in St. Thomas. He, he, he titled, Ego means erase God out. Erase God out. When we begin to remove God, when we are not worshiping God, we, 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 don't, we don't recognize that we are the creature created by God, then we gradually stain our own blood. Uh, then we begin to become impure. And so you see that's happened. So the second point is that in blood there is life, the symbol of life, force, and energy. Uh, so blood is also the symbol of life. When in the Old Testament, when, when blood is submitted to God, when, when blood is offered to God as a sacrifice, then it is the love of God, the providence of God, the care of God, make blood become precious. So blood can only become precious when it is in connected, in, 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 is connected with God. Huh? It has to be flow from God. Uh, and that is important for us to recognize. So, so because God nature, just like Father Nasty was talking about God is love. And the, the essential nature of God is what? Self-donating. Life is self-giving. I, I love the video uh, that uh, Father Nasty Cousin did, uh, especially the scene where the younger giving birth to uh, a child went to labor pain. But you know, after that pain, when the child came out, she looked at it, she smiled. There was so much joy. There was, her face looked like the face of Jesus. Huh? So when Christ on the cross, St. John said, He is the glory of God. So in John's Gospel, there is no separation between the crucifixion and the resurrection. Because when Christ was on the cross, Christ became the fullness manifestation of the divine love because he emptied himself totally in that act of taking his blood and give it abundantly to all people. So, so life-giving capacity in the blood has its meaning when it's used to be uh, for, for life, for self-donating. Okay. So where is, why, there is, uh, why is there a need for, uh, for shedding of blood? I think uh, because of sins, because poison in the blood causing disease and death. And so uh, when, let's go back to the Exodus event, the bronze serpent in the desert. Huh? The bronze serpent becomes the the, the serpent becomes the symbol of poison. Okay? However, when, when the blood was removed from it, when it, is, it becomes a symbol of, of the antidote to all the sins. So Jesus really the innocent victim, the one who embodied the cell, donate, the cell donating capacity. So that's why he becomes the means whereby we can purify ourselves. And so life force is in the blood that can undo and clean that death force that is impurity, disorder, chaos. So rituals in the Old Testament used to restore purity. Okay. Oh, now, this is important. Now, we talk about rituals. Huh? In the Old Testament, there are two kinds of rituals to, uh, for reconciliation, uh, for, um, for, 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 for forgiveness. Uh, the first ritual is scapegoating. So we know that scapegoat is impure. It is a sin porter or carrier. It is not an offering or gift. So we don't offer a scapegoat to God. Uh, uh, It is not given to Yahweh. It is ritually abused and mistreated and is then driven out of the sacred precincts, out of the city into the realm of Azazel. 
uh, uh, Jeanne uh, Girard uh, say one of the basic patterns of human behavior uh, after Adam and Eve is scapegoating. Huh? We see, he see that in all cultures. When we are not willing to face our own problems, our own uh, termites, our own rottenness, our own sins, then we have a tendency to find a scapegoat. Huh? Uh, so one country against another country, uh, that you find another country for a scapegoat, so they, when they have some problem within their own country, their own community, they, they don't know how to uh, manage the conflicts or handle or, or, rec or, or, or re reconcile all of the differences. So they will have to find another scapegoat outside the community, close enough but not inside the community. So they can put all of the sins, all the problems into that scapegoat and drive that scapegoat out. And so they begin to abuse and mistreat that scapegoat. And that was carried out not simply in the U.S. culture but all the cultures too. And, and in modern time, it's become you know, many different ways uh, of manifest, uh, manifesting scapegoating uh, tendency. And so you see, grieving out the sacred precincts, even in the church too, we sometimes we, have, we find scapegoat. Uh, we put all the problems into that group, and, and then we just don't want to have anything to do with that group. Uh, so the second uh, uh, ritual is called sacrifice. Sacrifice is pure. The sacrificial animal is not killed uh, to punish it, but to get its purifying blood. So one a year, uh, so they use the one a year unblemished lamb. It is offered up uh, it, to Yahweh in a very careful and controlled manner at the community central sac uh, sanctuary. So you see in Jesus, Jesus both a scapegoat for all human sins and weaknesses, everything was done on him. He got afflicted with all of the sins of humanity, but he offering himself freely out of love for all humanity. So that's why in Jesus we find a perfect combination of scapegoating and sacrificing. He willing to offer himself as a scapegoat for the love of all humanity. So. Uh, Let's look at the Passover. Uh, in the old time, the Passover celebrations, what did he do once a year? One, one day of the year, the high priest go behind the veil to offer the sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins of the people. So he killed the lamb uh, and sprinkled the blood on the veil. The veil is that's what separates uh, uh, the, the, holy, the, the, the holies of holy the sanctuary with the outside temple. And he entered, so he, the high priest cannot enter that until when he killed the lamb of sacrifice and sprinkled the blood onto the veil. Okay, so you see how that is, was carried on in the book of Hebrew. Jesus shed his blood and that blood, when he died on the cross, the veil of the temple was open. There's no longer separation between or barrier between God and humanity. He opened us up. He joined us together with God. He reconciled us with God the Father. And He's the first one who entered into the sanctuary. And He also helped us to recognize that we are, this one is the tabernacle of the sanctuary. Uh, 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 and then the, uh, the tabernacle, you recognize that inside that holy is of holy, no light except the candles make out of gold brought out of Egypt. Huh? So, uh, so the people offer everything that they have to God. Uh, there is a home where the sacrificial animal is tied, where he going to be uh, offered to God at the Holocaust. Uh, there is a bread of perpetual presence before which there, there must be constant burned candles. Uh, there's a 12 loaves of bread representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And so you see uh, this kind of ritual was carried out in, uh, in the death of Jesus. Uh, uh, the 12 apostles representing the 12 tribes. And then he offered himself as the means whereby he reconciled us with God the Father. Okay, I can just move on. Uh, number five, 
Jesus' Passover, the day Jesus offered himself as the sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of the people of all time. He's both the scapegoat and the once for all sacrifice that propitiates and expiates and redeems all humanity. So I just want to point out the story. If you, have you seen the movie uh, Alexander the Great? Yeah. In that movie, I find that Alexander tried to unify all of the, 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 all of the countries from, from, uh, from Macedonia to India by shedding the blood of so many people. Uh, but Jesus uh, did not shed anyone else's blood except himself. And so that's why his blood become precious. His blood also have the life. Uh, have the life-giving capacity which unite us with God, the Father. Okay. So, Jesus on the cross is the scapegoat and uh, also the, the only perfect sacrifice. He's the sacrificial one. He was offered in our place. And he also the one who paid the price, the penalty. And he also become the martyr, also the hero. And also, he got offered us a way how we can offer our blood as a means whereby we can help to uh, reconcile uh, others with God and with ourselves. And so therefore, crucifixion is the ritual act of atonement, uh, both scapegoat and sacrifice are really uh, included in that act. So resurrection is reconciliation and justification. Uh, the sacrifice that both once for all effectively propitiates. Uh, uh, that's in, 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 in Hebrew mean uh, he pay for, uh, for, for, for all of our, uh, our debts. Uh. He expi expiates, that means he also become the mercy seat of God whereby he remove all of our, our sins, our problems. And so we become one with God. So... I just point out the fact that the cross is a symbol of condemnation, but because Christ has the love, has, has had revealed so powerfully the love in the capacity that he embraced the cross in his life. That's why he become uh, the agent of reconciliation and also the one who become the ways that help us to learn how to be agents of reconciliation or ambassadors of reconciliation. So uh, in conclusion, I just want to uh, stress one point. All of us experience crosses in our life, and sometimes crosses are, are put on our shoulders because of our family of origin, because of our own weaknesses because of our own uh, mental, emotional, or spiritual uh, limitations or problems. Uh, and sometimes because of uh, the social context in which we found ourselves. And sometimes we are finding, our, finding ourselves in a particular culture which has all of uh, uh, the, the blind spots, all of the hard surfa uh, surfaces that Father men uh, mentioned. Uh, all of these things are really crosses put on our shoulders, and sometimes we don't know how to carry them and make sense of all the crosses in our life. But I think if we learn to let Christ journey with us, we learn to, be, to look at God's providential love and how He loved us so uniquely that He's willing to die for one of us. And if we feel that way, if we believe that way, if we are convinced of the providential care, and love of God and we trust in God, then we are able to transform the crosses into the cross of redemption, the, the cross of reconciliation. Actually, all of the, uh, the termites, all of the, the rottenness, all of the problems that we are facing in our life can make us become a more credible, more realistic, more vivid uh, illustrations of the power of God's love shining through our own human weaknesses, our own limitations. And we, I think, in doing that, in allowing ourselves to journey, to struggle, to wrestle with suffering, to, 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 
I mean, to struggle to carry the cross in our life, to struggle to remain in relationship when the other person refused to accept our, 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 our love or to refuse to understand us or to refuse to reconcile with us. And when we are doing that, we actually are really practicing reconciliation already. Uh, I think this is so important for, 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 for I mean, in my own life, huh? uh, being a priest for 17 years and a religious priest, and sometimes I, I live in the international community. You talk about, I mean, we have, uh, in Taiwan, we have almost like, uh, uh, we have 10 members. Uh, we, ha we have eight people, uh, we have eight countries, huh? come from different countries. Huh? And how difficult it is to practice reconciliation. And you know, sometimes we even don't take time to get to know one another. We just we have a different ecclesiology, with different different worldviews. We have a different uh, way of uh, of relating to God. The images of God are different. Even our own perceptions of ourselves are different because of the cultural limitations or, or interpretations of the dignity of human person or whatsoever. And all these things affect how we interact with one another. And sometimes it is so difficult yet to sit down to dialogue. And sometimes, you know, I find it's, it's hard to dialogue when people don't uh, have the same uh, uh, worldview. Uh, and sometimes they, uh, the, 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 uh, sometimes they don't have a, uh, the, the same uh, kind of uh, ecclesiology. And sometimes they have a different kind of family background and formations and all of the, what is valuable, the priorities in their life. And it's difficult. But I think in one thing that I, we, we can struggle to become uh, a community is that when we're willing to accept the cross. That sometimes because of that diversity imposed on us. And, 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 and I just recently that happened to me when I am willing to carry the crosses or sometimes when I'm willing to accept the blood shedding was done unto me by others out of love. Like Jesus was nailed on the cross, said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they have done. There is a willingness to recognize that that person who hurts me is really the one that I'm, I'm called to love no matter what. And to become the embodiment of that mercy, whether that person is worthy of my, my love or not, is not important. And perhaps I become the cross to others the same way that I don't see. So I don't know, in, in remaining with other people, in struggling with other people's differences, and willing to see Christ in others, is really that's what's more important. Uh, you know, uh, this was a story from, uh, from, 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 from India. I think it's so powerful. Uh, one day was a, a master gathered all of the wise men, the holy men gathered all his disciples together. And he was asking him, them, uh, when can you tell me when the night ends, when the day begins? And all the students, all the disciples was raising their hands. One of them said, oh, uh, when you can see the two animals walking toward you, you can tell which one is the cow, which one is the water buffalo. <laughs> then you, you, you know that the, the, the night ends, the day begins. And some other students say, well, when you can tell the two tree, which tree is the maple, which, uh, which tree is the oak. Uh, uh, but the, the, the teacher just, uh, just, just smiled and did not uh, fully satisfied with all of these answers. And finally, the students gave up and just look, uh, look at the master and say, uh, what is the answer, uh, master? And the master said, when you can see anyone, doesn't matter what color, what culture, what nationality, what backgrounds, what level of education, what classes, all of them, no matter who they are, they come to you and you can see into their eyes. You can be convinced that that person is your brother and your sister. That day, that is when the night ends, the day begins. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I, in my life, I, I have been wounded a lot, you know, wounded by war, wounded by all of my sicknesses, wounded a lot of... Uh, um, Un, uh, unsatisfactory kind of context, uh, uh, living context. Huh? But I, I recently came to realize how, you know, how often we so focus on these crosses and we forgot that these crosses are really make us become ambassadors of reconciliation. 
So I begin to stop just, 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 I, just, just complain about the crosses in my life and, and stop complaining about all of the things that should, mm, should be different, uh, uh, should have happened. And I begin to embrace, uh, uh, you know, and, and enter into the mystery of suffering. And, uh, and wrestling with all the issues, and I recognize that first and foremost, I have to be reconciled to myself. I have to see the face of God in and through all of the, 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 the things that's happening in, in my life. And so uh, one, uh, Don was, uh, was raising a question, how can, why peace is one of the most controversial thing to do, you know? Uh, I think, so, why? Because each one of us has a different opinion about peace. And, and I think, and, and secondly, because most of us don't have really looking at God first. Uh, if each person is willing to be reconciled with the image of God within himself, or uh, each community is struggling to try to embrace and to become amba am, uh, ambassadors of reconciliation, uh, then we will have a hard time to understand what's meant by peace. And, uh, the Chinese character, peace, Uh, it means uh, this is a uh, heaven, and this is heart here. Yeah. It's the, uh, the the heart. Huh? Uh, I forgot how to write English. And this is uh, the earth. And so, in order for for us to be the peace on earth, huh? yeah, we have to be willing to allow the principle of heavens or the ways of heaven to shower our heart and to change our heart, to transform our hearts, then at that time, then we can become an instrument of peace on earth. And, and I think this is so important. Uh, most of the time, we think that our way of thinking, our way of life is the only way that will bring about peace, but it's not. And you know quite well when you have, a, you, when you have a, a broken relationship, uh, conflicts within a marriage, and it's one the husband or the wife say, oh, you have to change according to my way, or you have to change from my way. And then you, you never have peace. You always have conflicts. And sometimes we just manage conflict. And sometimes we settle down and find the next thing. Uh, what, what do you call that? The irre irreconcilable differences. Uh, okay. And so, uh, and I just want to, uh, to, 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 to end with, uh, no, I didn't talk about that at one moment. How much time do I have? Okay, you, you see that symbol that uh, I mean, uh, uh, we did it. Huh? Uh, I designed that, but, but uh, that the pelican, huh? you see the, the character on the wings of the pelican? That is the character of the heart. Okay, and, and I, I removed the top that, is, that closed the heart with this mark. Huh? Okay, so the pelican is the symbol of Christ. He opened his heart. So his heart become big and I inclusive so that he can embrace all of the diversities together in him. So that is the symbol of the church. Huh? The church is supposed to be Catholic. The church has to be inclusive. And sometimes we get so stuck with the doctrines, the dogmas. They are important. But Father Nestle is correct saying the most important thing is God is love. Unless we are convinced of that and all of the other things, all the teachings, the dogmas, the church, I try to defend that. I try to protect that first and fun fundamental principle of, of, of revelation that God is love. God's willing to open his heart to share everything. And his heart is big enough to, to have rooms for everyone. Uh, sometimes we just draw so many boundaries to keep people out rather than bring people in. And that's why reconciliation is really difficult. Why? Because we need to learn to recognize all of us have blind spots have our, our assumptions about what is right, what is good, what is true, our images of God, our concept of ecclesiology, our concept of the teaching of the, of the church, sometimes need to be, uh, uh, to, to be challenged so that we can begin to work together. We put on this and Paul talk about the mind and the heart of Christ. Okay, now let's talk about uh, what's next is at, at one month. I don't have a lot of time to do all. How, how much time do you have? Five minutes, Maureen? Okay. 
so, uh, so Christ dies while living in the human place, not at a substitute in place of humans. He at one with us in our sufferings. He struggled through all the things with us. Whatever we experience, you know, just I share some of my experience in your marriage life or in your religious community or whatever, the church community, we all are experiencing that, yeah, with the disciples and everyone. So he's so fully human. And sometimes we are not willing to, to see that. We so focus on God is divine. Jesus is divine. We forget that he's so human. He feels all of the pains and the struggle, the, the hurts that we are, the wounds that, that, that we are experiencing in our life. Huh? He has won with us in sufferings. And Christ died as a scapegoat of human sin so that scapegoating might be exposed. And scapegoating may end. And, you know, with Christ, and that's why Rene Girard, Christ, the only scapegoat who was willingly chose himself to become a scapegoat out of love, and that's why he end all the vicious cycle of scapegoating in, in human history. So he become truly the his last therion, that is the mercy seat of God, where all of the forces will now can be transformed back to something which is life-giving rather than life-taking. Okay? So that's why begin with Christ, there is a, a recreation of everything. Energy will, will release uh, to become creative. And Christ as one man with human conditions and his cell donations are pure love on the cross. At one man with the Trinity. So when Christ was now on the cross, not, not simply yet Jesus alone. Jesus is in union with the Holy Spirit and the Father in that act of self-giving. Because the essence of the divine nature is self-giving. So when you talk about self-donating uh, uh, person, you cannot talk about that person outside the context of a community. So the Trinity become a model for any given community, any church community, any family. Uh, uh, makes reconciliation possible between humans and God and among men interpersonally. I, I don't have time to go through the quotation, so you just uh, read on your own the, the quotation from the scripture. Therefore, we are called to be at one month with Christ, that's with the Trinity, in order to carry out the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, this is important. Huh? And I think I, I don't care how gifted we are, how self-giving we are. We all are humans. We all have our own limitations. We all have our own biases. So we all have our own uh, limitations in our understanding and our capacity to make the right judgment and to execute our judgment correctly and to, to commit ourselves to be faithful in the process of becoming uh, more and more uh, uh, ambassadors of reconciliation. So we need to be in connection with Christ. We have to be at one man with God in order to be faithful ambassadors of reconciliation. And this is important. You see how Jesus, throughout his ministry, in order for him to remain faithful to his commitment to be uh, the only perfect ambassador of reconciliation, he constantly be with the Father. Therefore, we are called to be at one man with, with Christ. But also, Jesus also be at one man with other people feelings and struggles and pains. That's why Maureen talked about compassion, huh? uh, to feel with others, and that's important. We are able to carry out this ministry because Christ is as one man with us, first of all, because he gives us mercy, because we experience mercy in our life. As you tell, I'm telling you how difficult it is for me to forgive someone that hurts me unless I learn to, first of all, accept the love of God first in my life. And then I can be, so unless I feel I'm loved, and that's important, huh? in spite of whatever I have done or I deserve or not. So uh, in John God's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 1, I'm, I, no, I loved you to, I'm not, uh, I am, that means Jesus, uh, God, loved you to the end, okay? So, uh, 
I don't know I have time to go do this, but uh, let, let, let's see. Okay. Uh, I just want to identify one thing. Uh, the woman at the feet of Jesus pouring out all to initiate a process of becoming a person. He, uh, she took the, the jar of uh, perfume huh, and poured all out. And in John Gospel, the, the, the verb to pour uh, it, it also embodies the meaning of incarnation. So when Jesus poured the water uh, out to wash the disciples' feet, that's, that, that verb also means he took that which is infinite and poured into that which is finite. So it embodies the act of mercy. So the, the total empty of himself doesn't hold anything back. And that is a very much the concept of sacrifice in the Old Testament, to, to pour all the blood out. Uh, out of love for, 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 for the one that he's, he's really serving or he's loving. Uh, so that woman uh, touched Jesus profoundly because uh, she embodies what Jesus is doing uh, in his life. That's why Judas is really against that. So Judas becomes a, a representative figure of all the institutional uh, kind of uh, uh, communities which basically refuse to that, 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 uh, that, that act of self-emptying. Okay. Uh, Let's see. I just want to, to say something about the book that I'm recommending you to read, that book uh, by uh, uh, Kushner, huh? Rabbi Kushner. That book changed my life. Huh? Uh, why? Because there's a lot of disappointments in our life, a lot of crosses as we experience in our life, and sometimes we don't, you don't understand why. We, we are wrestling with all of the issues, all the disappointments in life, but there's one thing that he said in that book that that touched me profoundly. I think that's important for us to hear that he said that Moses was able to become ambassador of reconciliation, was able to, to, to maintain the, the, the unity among all of the Israelites when there are so many tribes and so many uh, different uh, perceptions of God, different way of, uh, of doing things. Uh, the reason he was able to do that because he was able to keep the broken pieces of the two tablets in his life. All of the, all of the broken dreams that he has uh, uh, make him humble, recognize that God's way is bigger than his way. He see one way, but God sometimes has a different way of manifesting. And sometimes he has to be willing to make his life become a broken piece that's, that lay on the road for someone else to step on to go forward. So he's not the end in itself, but he's the means whereby God's mercy will be revealed to others. And I think that's important. I don't know. Uh, I've been a priest for so many years. Every time I, I got upset or angry with someone who did something wrong to me, I always, say, I always uh, look at myself and say, oh, why didn't they do, or why didn't they appreciate me or whatsoever, uh, or values me? But sometimes I need to recognize that, you know, uh, maybe God's call, my call is what? To become a piece of stone on that road for people to step on to get ahead. If I can remain loving, forgiving, and, and, and peaceful, and continually becoming self-giving in the process, therefore, I can help to open the road of civilization, you know, a, a civilization of, of love. Huh? And so, uh, first, uh, so, so number four, we need a hard road, not a smooth one. A road with different types of stones enables one to move forward without being dragged into the mud of life. And these, uh, these stones are basically the disappointments, the crosses, the difficulties in our life. So the broken pieces of our dreams are not mere stones, but stepping stones. Okay. Life is tough. Let us be reconciling in order to be resilient. I think when we learn to struggle, to forgive, to be reconciling, we become more resilient, huh? strong enough to be, not to be broken by it. Not letting any single life's difficulties and disappointments define or imprison oneself. 
how often we allow a, 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 a not working out kind of relationship or some event in our life define us in imprison us, allow us to be buried in the tombs of yesterday and we never be able to get out. So sometimes we need to, uh, like Jesus called Lazarus, uh, get out. Huh? And then we have to help our comfort, our, our, our brother and sister to untie uh, uh, all of the, 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 the band, uh, the cloth that tie uh, around their bodies, around their minds and their hearts. And a broken dreams, not broken hearts. We're willing to allow ourselves to experience broken dreams because they are stones that help us to move ahead, but not allow our, ourselves to be broken down. Okay? Once we understand in all humility, not everything that happens is about us or because of us, then personal sorrow need not and should not teach us to feel sorry for ourselves. It can and should teach us to feel solidarity with others, to be at one man with others. And also because we know that God is at one with us through Christ, we are called to be at one man with ourselves and with others through atonement. Sometimes we will be scapegoated. Scapegoating will happen, especially when we are choosing to become ambassador of reconciliation, we will experience scapegoating perhaps more often than we, we can ever imagine. And then we are called to be sacrificial. And we are called to be heroic witnesses of the power of redeeming love, of mercy. We are called to become the seed, the mercy seed. Huh? People will sit on it. And some they sit, they, after they got something, they move out, and other people sit on it. That's fine, so long as we become the seed of mercy. And so that people can at least feel uh, uh, revitalized. And they can, they, they can they sit there and meditate and hold all the broken dreams and all the crosses and then make sense of their, 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 their life. And then they get on, they become the seed of mercy for others. You know, I, I, I find life is not, uh, it, it, it's, not a, it's not something so clear. Uh, sometimes it's not uh, the answer to all the problems. Sometimes just, just be with the struggles. Just, just wrestle with all the unanswered questions in life. Uh, wrestle with all the things. And sometimes we get, sh we, 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 people sit on us. Yeah? We, we do so many things that, that's, that that, 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 that you don't expect these people do to you, but they did. So what? We know that Christ with us, and Christ went through all these things. And we are called to, when we are nailed on the cross, still looking at all of our brothers and sisters who are standing around with their fists pointing toward us, crucify him, crucify him, and say, you are my brothers, my sister. I love you. And I think that is a challenge especially when we are made into atonement, a scapegoat, and when we continue to become at one with them, with God, and with ourselves, and we become peace-giving. And that is the most difficult uh, thing to do. But in Christ, you can do that. Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I find this, uh, I, I don't know. My talk this year is different because I have been exposed to a lot of uh, realities of life human trafficking, you know, in, in uh, 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 prostitutions. And I work with a lot of girls who are being just sold by their parents uh, into another country, become, you know, and, and, and being misused by the country and become prostitutes. And a lot of workers are being abused and a lot of, you know, all of the, the things that uh, uh, capitalistic uh, uh, values are sometimes misused because people don't see other people as being uh, created in God's image. They don't see that other people have precious blood. So I, I see the church has a lot of, of things to share. And what Father Nasty said today is so important and, and, and it's good for us to stop stop uh, <laughs> taking blood from others. Uh, begin to see that we uh, our blood is precious. And when we see that, then we begin to respect other people's blood. No matter whether they are poor, they are women, they are men, they are rich or poor, whatever, what color they are, they all have precious blood. And then it's good for us to do our best to become agent of peace and of reconciliation. Okay. Atonement and atonement, uh, maybe this is the truth. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, 
Well, we try our best to, to become agents of God, uh, uh, God's love. Uh, number one, so I want to point out the difference between atonement and atonement. Uh, so in at atonement, God's image is what? He's the judge. Uh, he demands justice. We have to pay back. But in atonement, God is a self-giving God, self-donating God. So he gives himself, so God is mercy. This, God is not simply justice. God is mercy. So he, he gives us, gives himself, even when we are not, we, when we don't deserve that love, that mercy. The second one, in atonement, the motive uh, for, 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 the, for the act of atonement is what? Uh, just to, 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 to pay back, huh? to be just, uh, justice. But the other one is mercy. Uh, uh, the means and the way whereby atonement is, uh, is achieved and atonement is achieved. Uh, for atonement, is a, uh, you select a substitute, a scapegoat, uh, so that you can uh, at least temporarily reconcile yourself. But in atonement, uh, it's no longer a substitute. It is you yourself. Make yourself a sacrifice. So you become at one with the persons who are hurting you, or uh, sometimes uh, uh, with the one who are victimizing us. And so that we can expose the scapegoating. And we can, ex we can reveal the mercy and the love of God. And that's where we can stop. Yet like Rene Girard talked about the scapegoating pattern. Uh, in that person's life, in the, in, in the one who is victimizing us. And that's why Gandhi is doing that. Huh? And then later on, Maureen will share a quotation from Martin Luther King. I think it's very powerful. Uh, number four, the purpose for what? Uh, the purpose of atonement is to be free of guilt. But uh, the purpose for atonement is to be one with God, with all. Uh, so Jesus is both atonement and atonement. And that's important for to keep in mind. Jesus is both atonement and at one man. Uh, uh, because Jesus is at one with us in our humanity, in our own brokenness, in our own problems, but he's sinless. That's why he can become also the sacrifice too. And in and through being the sacrifice, he become the means whereby we can achieve that at one man with God, with ourselves, and with others. And, and that's why I think the summary of everything is really in the quotation uh, written by our Pope, Pope Benedict XVI, uh, Deus Caritas S, uh, God is love. Jesus' death on the cross is the culmination of that turning of God against himself in which he gives himself in order to raise man up and save him. This is love in its most radical form. This is love using the ritual act of atonement and sacrifice to reveal uh, God is mercy and Jesus is the seed of mercy whereby we can rest, we can move on, we can renew ourselves, we can be recreated in God's image.